So let me start off by saying that I'm not willing to disclose exactly where the events of this sighting took place, but I can say that I live in the US. The town I live in is not densely populated, but it's not rural countryside either. Just a nice, peaceful urban town. There's only one thing that's a little special about my town, and that's the rain. We get a lot of rain, and I mean a lot. About three or four times a year, we get a rainstorm so bad that my town had to implement special drains and flood prevention systems just so there wouldn't be disasters. The rain is so bad during these storms that you can't even see more than a few feet in front of you, so it makes driving or traveling anywhere practically impossible. Our town has nicknamed these storms we get a few times a year as Mega Rainstorms, or MRS for short. The news is always warning about the next MRS weeks in advance. The police and fire department strongly advise the entire town to stay in their homes and don't dare come out until the storm is over. I lived here all my life, and I would always ask my parents about the storms. They told me never to go out in them, that it's too dangerous. So back when I was a kid, I would always ignore the storm and stay inside and play video games. There was no point looking out the window at it, because the rain was so dense, the visibility was terrible. I'm 21 now, and have never once dared to leave the house during an MRS, but that changed yesterday. Yesterday was a mega rainstorm, and it started around 5 p.m. I was already inside and watching TV, when at about 5.43 p.m., I got a text from my best friend, Sean. He said he was caught out in the storm, driving home, and he couldn't see anything. He ended up running into a telephone pole and his car was stuck. He called the police, but they told him that they couldn't respond in the storm. So he was asking if I could come by to help him and take him back to my place until the storm was over. I didn't really want to go out in the middle of the storm, but Sean always had my back when I needed him, so I decided to go help. Sean told me that the street he was on was only about 10 blocks away, so I decided it would be best not to drive. With no visibility, it actually might be better for me to walk so I wouldn't get into an accident. I put on my rain boots and grabbed my umbrella. For the first time in all my 21 years, I was finally going to go out during a mega rainstorm. It was honestly a scary thought, and I was getting nervous. But I opened the door, and the first thing that hit me was the sound. The sound of the rain hitting the ground was so loud, it was like nothing I've heard before. I opened my umbrella and stepped out of my house and immediately felt the weight and pressure of the water falling down on it. I could barely see anything outside the radius of my umbrella. The entire town seemed completely vacant. Everyone was inside. No cars were on the road. No other people walking like I was. I started slowly making my way towards the street that Sean was on, making sure I stayed on the sidewalk so I wouldn't lose the street and get lost. It wasn't until I got about four blocks away from my house when I saw the dark outline of what appeared to be a figure of another person in the distance. They happened to be going in the direction that I was going, so I slowly started getting closer, and when I did, I could roughly make out that it was the figure of a man. A tall man. They didn't have an umbrella, and they weren't moving either. They were just standing at the corner of the block. Once I finally got about ten feet from the man, I saw that he was about six and a half feet tall, and he wore a long black trench coat that almost went down to his shoes. The collar of his coat was flared up so high I couldn't see his face from the side, and atop his head he wore a black fedora-style hat. I found it a bit weird that someone would even dare to come out in the storm without an umbrella. As it passed by the man, however, I noticed something that made me freeze. I couldn't see his face. There was nothing but darkness, but possibly even more disturbing was despite the imminence downpour, he was completely dry. The water looked like it was repelling right off his clothes, leaving him completely bone dry. The man didn't move or look at me at all as I slowly walked past him. I was freaked out and I started to walk faster, trying to get away from him quickly. After I walked another block, I looked behind me and the man was gone. I started wondering if I was just stressing out being in the storm and the anxiety got to me. 
After walking a few more blocks, I started to calm down and dismiss the things I saw as nothing more than anxiety. Just when that thought crossed my mind, I saw another figure walking in the same direction as I was on the other side of the street. This person wasn't as tall, and they had an umbrella, so I knew it couldn't be the same man from before. I didn't pay them any mind, as we both walked on opposite sides of the street from each other for another block or so. When I looked over at them this time, though, I saw a figure walking behind the person with the umbrella. It didn't take long for me to recognize this familiar figure as the tall man from before. I was shocked. How could he have walked all the way up here and caught up to us that quickly? I watched from the other side of the street as the tall man slowly got closer and closer to the figure with the umbrella, until eventually he was right behind him. It was then that the tall man in his dark coat reached out with both his arms and grabbed the person and pulling them in tight. A large cloud of dark blue and black smoke enveloped them, and when the smoke dispersed, the tall man and the person were gone. The umbrella fell to the ground with a clack as I stood there in disbelief. I started to think that I was dreaming, and this had to be some sort of nightmare. But the occasional rain and wind hitting my face while under the umbrella reminded me that this was no nightmare. At this point, I was scared and started walking faster and faster, just trying to get to Sean as quick as possible. I only made it another block when I saw the tall dark figure coming straight towards me on the same side of the street. Chills ran down my spine, and I immediately turned around and started running back to my house. By now, even with all the flood drains around, there was a two or three inch layer of water across the whole street and sidewalk. This combined with the imminent downfall caused me to lose my footing. I fell down and got soaked as I lost grip of my umbrella. I looked back and the dark figure was getting closer. Panicking and stumbling to my feet, I just took off without the umbrella. After about a block, I saw an alleyway that had a roof and looked like a shortcut back to my neighborhood. I took it and I was finally able to get out of the relentless downpour. Looking back at the tall man again, I noticed something even more chilling. He appeared to be phasing in and out of reality, almost like he was teleporting a few feet at a time. No wonder he was catching up to me so quickly, even though he was only walking. He had already made it to the alleyway that I was taking. I mustered my courage and turned around to start shouting at him, telling him to go away and leave me alone. However, my resolve was broken when I saw him clearly walking through puddles and not making any ripples in the water at all. Whatever this tall, dark figure was, it was clearly not human. At this point, I was absolutely terrified. Was I going to die out here from whatever the hell this thing is? I just ran out as fast as I could back to my house, trying my hardest not to slip in all the water everywhere. When I exited the alleyway, I was relieved to see that I was only one block away from my house. I looked back at the figure and noticed he was now closer than ever, only about 30 feet from me. Fearing for my life, I ran faster than I ever have before, desperately trying to get back to my house, but the rain was making it so hard to see. I was so tired and out of breath, I felt like I was going to pass out when I finally made it to my door. I reached into my pocket for my keys, which was now completely soaked along with the rest of my clothes. The keys slipped out of my hands, landing on the ground, and I reached down, trying to grab them, panicking. Not wanting to turn around and look, fearing he was going to be right behind me, I just picked them up, finally found the right key, and opened the door. I ran inside and slammed the door shut and locked it. I took a deep breath and looked out my living room window. I saw the tall man in his long, dark coat and hat standing on the other side of the street outside my house. He was just standing there, staring at me, completely dry like he was never out in the rain at all, until the same large cloud of dark blue and black smoke covered him, and when it cleared, he was gone. I took another deep breath, still in shock over what I had just experienced. I kept wondering, why didn't the dark figure grab me when I was so close to it? I was no more than 10 feet from him when I first got a good look at him. He could have easily grabbed me there. So why didn't he? Who's the person they grabbed a hold of earlier? What happened to them? I grabbed my phone and went to text Sean and tell him about what happened. But when I unlocked my phone, I saw something. A text from Sean, and it read, Hey, never mind. 
I actually found an umbrella in my glove compartment. I'm going to try to walk and make my way to your house. See you in a bit. Sent ten minutes ago. I texted back, telling Sean he needs to stay in his car and to not set foot out into the storm. I never got a reply. It has now been two weeks, and no one, including myself, has seen or heard from Sean at all. I went to the street and found his car empty, as if stranded. A search was conducted to find him, but they were unsuccessful in finding any trace of him at all. I never told anyone about what happened to me out there, and what probably became of my best friend, fearing people would think I was losing my mind. But I know. I know what really goes on out there during those storms. I know what really happened to Sean. I miss him. I wish I could have seen the text sooner and warn him. To warn him of the Rain Man.